Hello everyone, it's that college football guy here with another video. Well, it's time to do the after recap of the afternoon games. Some of the evening games are uh, right now getting going. They're actually getting quite good. But first and foremost, we got a little bit of a recap to do here. We got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, nine games to get to. So first and foremost, housekeeping out the way. Everybody hit the thumbs up. Helps with the algorithm. Helps if we need to see more people comment on the video. Love interacting with everybody. Subscribe to the channel. So we can get just past 200 subscribers on our way to 300 now. Let's get into this. All right, so first game we're talking about is Kentucky and Louisville. Louisville game went, went, came in ranked. I don't think they'll be ranked anymore. Kentucky beats them 26-13. to 13. Um, Will Levis went 11-19 for 188 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Chris Rodriguez Jr. was 24 carries for a buck 20. Uh, the Kentucky defense, four sacks, five QB hurries, two INTs, and a fumble recovery. They got it done. And congratulations to Kentucky on getting a win. The Iron Bowl, Alabama and Auburn. Really wasn't much of an iron bowl. Alabama bowls them out 49 to 27. <laughs> Bryce Young, 20 for 30, 343 yards, three touchdowns and an INT, plus a rushing touchdown. Four TDs total. Team rushing, 34 carries, 173 yards, and four touchdowns. The defense for Bama. Four sacks, eight QB hurries, two fumble recoveries. <laughs> How bad are you? A fumble recovery was made by an Alabama player. Maybe one of the best names in college football. I'm not making this up. Kool-Aid McKinstry. He's a sophomore defensive back for Alabama. You heard me right. Kool-Aid McKinstry. Dot me. Look it up. Wow. But Alabama got another win. All right. SMU and Memphis. I thought Memphis had a chance to pull the S the upset. That's why it went against the Sharks. Sharks said they would not cover the SMU wouldn't cover the spread, but they'd win. Well, the Sharks are right. SMU beat Memphis 34-31. Tanner Mordecai was 22 of 30, 238 yards and two touchdowns. Tyler Levine threw in two rushing touchdowns of his own. Memphis actually had a chance late to win this game. And um, they were driving down the field and threw the and um, Seth Hennigan threw the ball in the back of the end zone and Brandon Crossley intercepted it with two seconds left to give Memphis the, to give SMU the win. Memphis tried to go for it, just wasn't in the cards. So congratulations to SMU on getting the win. Minnesota and Wisconsin. Okay. P.J. Fleck took this job in Minnesota a while back. And the deal with taking the job was simply this. Can you beat, change the way the rivalry's gone and beat Wisconsin? Because Wisconsin hasn't beaten up Minnesota for the better part of a decade. Well, Minnesota beats them 27-16. First time since 1993 and 1994 that Wisconsin has law, or Minnesota has beaten Wisconsin in back-to-back -back games. So congratulations, Minnesota, on that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Lord, I'm going to butcher this last name. Kaliak Kali Kali Manus? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, the freshman quarterback from Minnesota, 19-29, 319 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Muhammad Ibrahim, he actually was the defense of Wisconsin, a good job. They only held him to 70 yards rushing. He didn't have to contribute much. Um, final parts of this game was actually pretty interesting. Graham Mertz, Wisconsin was driving in their final drive of the game. Graham Mertz, the starting QB, got knocked out, so I think make sure Chase Wolf was the backup, try to you know lead him down the field to try to win the game, maybe even to tie the game, maybe even win it at that point. Especially not 27-16, excuse me, it was 22, 23-16, 27-16. 23-16 was the final score, 23-16, 23-16. I can't read my own damn writing. This is on paper. Um, he had a chance to get the game, but Wisconsin just shot themselves in the foot. Pass interference, play on a false start. Next thing you know, uh, she pass, inter she made pass interference in the I'm getting ahead of myself. Pass interference in the end zone against Minnesota made it first and goal at the five with, I think it was, what was it? 26 seconds left? So they have a chance to win this game. Commit back-to-back -back penalties. Minnesota's now, excuse me, Wisconsin's now, uh, where they're pushed back to the 20. And then Wisconsin, you know, uh, Wolf was trying to get the ball down the field, threw an incompletion. Then Wisconsin has two more false starts. So, basically, it now becomes the point where you have to, you're way down the field. They're at their own 25, they're at the 25-yard line, I believe it was. So, Wisconsin's got to try to throw the ball first and goal for at the goal line. It's supposed to be a goal play. I think it was excuse me, third and goal at the 25. 
And he throws the ball, Wolf throws the ball up into the crowd, and needless to say, got knocked down by Minnesota. Wisconsin just shot themselves in the foot on this one. They had a chance and just penalty after penalty after penalty after penalty. But Minnesota got the win, so congratulations to Minnesota and Coach Fleck for getting that win. Oregon State and Oregon. This was one of the games on upset alert. I had three games predicted for an upset alert, potentially. South Carolina and Clemson, Oregon State and Oregon, Tennessee and Bandy. Two of the three are going to happen. Two of the three happen. Third one, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll get into that. First taste, Oregon State beats Oregon 38-34. Oregon State's rushing 43 carries for 268 yards and five touchdowns. They got it done. Um, Oregon State actually lost the turnover battle 3-1, to one, but somehow won this game. Um, and actually, Bo Nix and Oregon were driving down the field and trying to take the lead or take the lead and you know, come back and win this thing. And they turned over on downs on the final drive, so just shot themselves in the foot on that one, just couldn't get it done. Now, there's a situation involving the Pac-12 title game. SC is in it. They're in. Their opponent could be either Oregon, Utah, or Washington. Oregon has to have either Washington State's got to beat Washington, or Oregon's got to lose to Oregon State. Uh, it's a combination of things have to happen for um, me, Oregon, has to, Oregon has to win or you know, Washington has to lose. That was, excuse me. Oregon to get in, they have to, have, they have to win their game or Washington, Washington has to lose to Washington State. That game's still in doubt here. Um, Oregon lost to Oregon State. Utah can get in if they beat Colorado, which they did, <laughs> 63 to 21. Cam Rising, 17 to 19, 234 yards and three touchdowns. Total rushing for the for Utah, 43 carries, 383 yards and five TDs. And Jaquindon Jackson, the freshman running back, was 10 carries for a buck 17 and three of those five touchdowns. Dominant performance by Utah. But anyway, basically, is this? I'll get back to this real quick. Oregon had to beat Oregon State, and Washington has to lose to Washington State for Oregon to get in. Washington has to have Oregon State would have Oregon would have to lose. Utah would have to lose. Well, Utah won, so Washington's out. So basically, for Utah to get in, they had to have they had to beat Colorado. Utah had to beat Colorado. UCLA would have to beat Cal. They did. Oregon State would have to beat Oregon. They did. If Washington beats Washington State, it makes it a three-way tie at 7-2. and two. And because of a strength of conference schedule, Utah would get in. So basically, it means this. If Washington beats Washington State, Utah plays SC in the title game. If Washington State beats Washington, Oregon plays USC in the title game. So that game later tonight determines who goes in the title game, and the two participants have no, or aren't either one of them are going. <sighs> Crazy. Penn State, Michigan State. Let's get back into this here. Penn State beats up on Michigan State, thirty-five to sixteen. Sean Clifford, nineteen to twenty-four, two hundred two yards and four touchdowns. Team rushing, forty-five carries for a buck sixty. Team defense, three sacks, six QB hurries, nineteen a fumble recovery, and Abdul Carter, the freshman linebacker, had two of those sacks. So Penn State got it done. TCU, I was saying TCU and Iowa State. The Iowa State, they, they may win, but they won't cover. I think they wanted to make a statement. Max Duggan and the boys want to make a statement, and did they ever? Max, Max Duggan and TCU beats Iowa State 62 to 14, a complete demolition. He was Max Duggan was 17 to 24, 212 yards and three touchdowns. Kendra Miller threw in two rushing touchdowns. And there were two pick sixes for TCU. Josh Newton had a 57 yard pick six. And Miller Bradford had a 36-yard pick six. Just offense and defense, total domination, and the score dictates it. And the last game was actually a 6 o'clock game, which just happened. I was hoping UNLV could pull off the win. I predicted them to go 5-7. and seven. Everybody else had them going 2-9 and nine, or 2-10. and ten. Well, UNLV beats Nevada to win the Fremont Cannon, 27-22. Um, UNLV, it did not look good early. Doug Brumfield, their starting quarterback, went out early. Like, he was 0 for 2 passing and he got knocked out with an injury. Again. So, Harrison Bailey, the Tennessee transfer, steps up. Goes 16-27, 209 yards, two touchdowns and an INT. Um, 
Defensively for UNLV, three sacks, two picks, and a fumble recovery in the end zone for a touchdown, which was done by Jonathan Baldwin, who had one of the INTs and made that fumble recovery touchdown. So basically what it was was defense, 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 defense. Got him in this game. and Nevada had a chance late, but they just couldn't cash in. So congratulations to UNLV. They get their fifth win of the year. Stepping stone moving forward to a good season. So, did any of these results surprise me? Um, TCU scoring 62 points surprised me. Um, Oregon State beating Oregon, it didn't really surprise me because I had them on upset alert. South Carolina and Clemson had upset alert about them. Um, Tennessee Vandy, well, um, last I checked, it was 28-0 or 35-0. It was just horrible. Tennessee is just obliterating Vanderbilt right now. Vandy was... As a college football fan, even though I love Tennessee and I don't want them to lose, it actually would have done my heart some good, even being a Tennessee fan to see it happen. Somebody brought it up in the comments. If Vandy and Kansas played each other in a bowl game, I would watch the first quarter of that game because of the fact of nostalgia. Maybe the last time that's happened, if ever. But Vandy falls to 5-7 and seven now, so... Unless they can score 35 points in a quarter, it ain't happening, folks. So, anything surprise you in these games? I mean, TCU scoring as many points as they did. Um, the upsets, I kind of thought about most of them were going to happen, so I'm not too shocked. Um, tell me what you think down in the comments. What you think down below. So, thanks, everybody, for watching the video. The rest of the games I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm going to be starting in my truck early, so you're probably going to see a truck video tomorrow. With me doing a recap of the week as well as the games I didn't do today. Um, it will be early unless something else dictates something otherwise. I'll be doing them, doing a bit, not early, but I'll be doing it like lunchtime. Doing a video for that and a recap. And with conference championship games coming up, I'm going to be doing a recap. I looked at my old sheets of who I had going to the conference championships and oh boy was that bad. Um, <laughs> I got one right. One. Uh, <laughs> Ironically, for living in Vegas for 40 years, it's the Mountain West Conference I got right. So, do what you think down in the comments for everything. Thanks, everybody, for watching the video. Enjoy some college football on Saturday. Please be safe and be good out there.